What is up, everybody? We're back with our team reviews. I don't know what number team we're on, but we are on the Cincinnati Bengals. We're going in alphabetical order. I think this is like team seven or something like that. Uh, as always, joined by my father. Uh, Dad, I think we are at 49 days until NFL kickoff. Uh, and we're talking about the Bengals. Are you excited to talk about the Bengals? Yep. It's... um. You're already starting to get uh, players put on the pup list. Uh, Brees Hall, I, I read this morning, he's got on the pup list and some guys on the Jets, you know, as the rest of the uh, NFL gets into training camp, they'll, you will start hearing a lot of guys um, get put on pup list or the non-football injury list and those things. So um, not, a, not a huge surprise. Uh, Denzel Mims, who was drafted number two by the Jets, I think three years ago. He's kind of the big body, fast wide receiver out of Baylor and never could quite hack it with the Jets, make it with the Jets. He's like six foot two, runs four, three, eight, 40, and the Lions traded for him. So um, there's a little action going on. Yeah, yep. Rookies are reporting, and um, I think most teams by this time next week will have started their training camps. I think the Hall of Fame teams, uh, whoever's playing in the Hall of Fame game, um, I think that they are um, reporting this week. So, uh, if I if I'm not mistaken, but yep, you get news. Um, you know, the pup list stuff. It's not totally irrelevant, but it doesn't mean anything until. What matters is when, uh, if you're put on the pup list, list at the end of training camp, then you're missing, you're automatically missed those six games. So right now, um, you, it doesn't really mean much. I mean, it means in the sense that you can't practice. And I think it means a lot for, um, you know, like Kendra Miller is a, a rookie running back for the Saints who people are high on, especially with potentially Kamara being suspended. And it matters for a guy like him because uh, rookies, if you're going to miss training camp, you're probably going to not do much this year because you're a rookie and um, you need training camp desperately. So um, that's probably what it means the most. But we're going to get into uh, the depth chart of the Cincinnati Bengals. Just go through. Um, we're, we're looking at this from, from a half PPR point of view. Um, but, you know, most of this stuff translates over to whatever format you're going to do. Uh, redraft football, and we'll throw in maybe some dynasty and real football here as well. As you can see, we have our depth chart here. Uh, I think the Bengals are maybe the easiest team in all of the NFL. <clears throat> Definitely the easiest team we've done so far. Um, it's pretty cut and dry with, with the positions. There's no question marks at all, in my opinion. So um, at quarterback, we have Joe Burrow. Um, no question, the guy's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Um, no one would argue with you about that. Um, the guy's going to throw 35 touchdowns, most likely. He's going to throw 4,500 plus yards. He has, which we'll get to, a, a stud receiving core, very deep. Um, and that's basically all you need to know about Joe Burrow. I mean, he's not going to give you much on the ground. So uh, he is capped a little bit. Uh, Dad, he is currently going as the QB4. It's Mahomes, Allen, Hurts, and then Burrow. Uh, or do you agree with that? Do you think guys like Herbert, Lamar Jackson, Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence should go over Burrow? Where, where do you fall on the, uh, on um, the train? Yeah, maybe not Trevor Lawrence. Um, I think Burrow's a good, um, a good solid three, I guess, behind good old Mahomes and um, – and Josh Allen, I think, you know. Well, Hurts. What's that? And, yeah, and Jalen Hurts. So, yeah, number four. Number four, definitely. Um, he he kind of fits in there. Um, and he should, I mean, the way he plays football, he should be top fantasy QB for many years. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, my only counter to that is I, I think, like, guys like Lamar Jackson – should go over Burrow because of their rushing floor. And even a guy like Justin Fields, I would probably take over Burrow, especially compared to where you can take them. You know, right now you have to get Burrow at the end of the second 
uh, early third pick, third round pick. And, you know, Justin Fields, you can get at the end of the, um, uh, the end of the fourth round. So I kind of like that a little bit more. Um, and um, yeah, the, the only thing that scares me, and we saw it last year with Justin Herbert, um, is that with these guys that don't have the rushing floor, there is that chance that they just have an off year in terms of their touchdown passes. You know, Herbert still threw for over 4,700 yards, but he only threw 25 touchdown passes. And when you're not running the ball and, and really giving you much on the floor, uh, on the ground, um, you could have down years like that. So like Burrow needs to throw 35 touchdowns in order to kind of pay back where you're going to draft him at. And that's the only, only concern in terms of fantasy. So, um, but he should do pretty well. I mean, I don't know. There's really not much else to say. Trevor Simeon's on the team. Doesn't mean anything. Um, I guess we'll go into the running backs if that's all right, Dan, unless you want to say anything else about Burrow. No, there's really not much more to say. I mean, um, it's not a big secret and everything else. So, yeah. Um, on to the running backs. We got some news. Was it last week that uh, Mixon uh, restructured his contract, took less money, and is going coming back with the Bengals? And I think I heard the, the nature of the contract essentially guarantees he's going to be on the Bengals the next two years. Um, which is nice, nice to see. Uh, we were pretty worried there uh, that he was going to get cut or replaced. And then I think basically ever since like the draft, I've been kind of like, yeah, it doesn't seem like they're going to move on from Mixon at this point because it's like they didn't really draft anyone. I mean, they did bring in a rookie who we'll talk about in a second. But, um, you know, they, they didn't spend any high draft capital. They didn't bring in a free agent. So, Seemed like the writing was on the wall for Mixon to come back. If you like to play in like best ball underdog stuff, and you know, you can do those drafts in March for the 2023 season, uh, you probably got a good bargain on, on Joe Mixon. I'm looking at it now. He was um, going between in the month of June, essentially, he was going as the RB17, and he was going um, in the fifth round. Um, which to me for the lead running back for the Bengals is kind of a steal in my opinion. Dad, what do you think about that? Where where would you feel comfortable now drafting Joe Mixon now that you know he is back with the Bengals? Um you know, I don't I don't think he's taken that much of a dive. Um that seems kind of low the what you were talking about and um you know I, I would make him on my fantasy team. I wouldn't have a problem if he was my running back too. You know, I didn't know the contract was for um, for two years, so that kind of I thought if it was a one year thing that the uh, that rookie Chase Brown would be in there more often. Well, I still think he's going to be, but um, but you know, I think I think Mixon missed some time last year. But he still had uh, 200, 210 carries, so he, he does, um, and he does, uh, he's relevant in the passing game, too. So, last year, geez, last year he had 60 receptions. That's, that's tremendous, I mean, uh, and stuff like that. Um, so, if he has the same, yeah. if he has the same year, this year as he did last year 800 yards rushing and catches 60 passes I, th I think i'm pretty pleased yeah yeah and just for reference in the last week uh, he's been going as rb 15 so he's moved over he was going behind kenneth walker and aaron jones um before we knew he was back at the Bengals. and essentially over the last week he's uh, moved up two spots ahead of aaron jones and Kenneth Walker and is now going at the end of the fourth round. So he's boosted up a little bit. It's I, still, I agree um, with that. Yeah, I like that. I like. Sorry. I would um, fourth, fifth round. I'd be. I think I'd be pleased. Aaron Jones yeah. is a good, a good, um, a good comparison. You know, um, I'd be pleased with either one of those guys. So, what about Mixon or Etn? Travis Etn. They're going uh, in the same man. range ish. I just. I think 
I think I'd lean towards ETN because he's a little younger. I want to see, you know, he's a thousand, thousand yard rusher. I know it didn't seem like it. And everybody thought he was going to be a little more relevant in the passing game. But um, so I don't know. He's got some competition there in Jacksonville. But anyway, I, I think yeah. I'd go with ETN. I think I would take ETN. I'd probably still take Mixon just because he should get the volume. Um, he should get over 200. I mean, again, uh, 2021 when he played the whole, basically the whole year, he missed the game. He had almost 300 touches. Um, I, I think we think of, oh, the Bengals, they throw the ball a lot. It's like, well, when there's one running back they give the touches to, that's kind of the way, even if they throw a lot, you're still going to run the ball 30, you know, 45% of the time, 40% at the lowest. Um, so, I mean, even last year he had 210 touches and he missed three games. Um, so that's still a good number, 210 touches in 14 games. Basically, add on another forty-five touches, and you're over two fifty. Um, we you talked about the passing; he had the most catches in his career. He was a little bit of a disappointment. He was just kind of inefficient. The Bengals' offensive line, I don't think, has been the greatest. It is improved, um, so hopefully that helps Mixon. But he's hasn't been super efficient. Um, you, you you would expect the lead running back for the for the Bengals that's getting um, you know three hundred touches the last couple of years, you expect him to put up bigger numbers, I would say. Um, he was RB12 last year in half PPR. He averaged 14 points a game, which is um, really, really good. I think there's only about six, uh, about seven or eight guys that have averaged, that averaged 14 points a game last year. The one thing about him, though, is he had a 53-point a, a game, half PPR point game which is insane, right? 53 points is, it was uh, what, five touchdowns I think he had in one yeah, game. Yeah, that is crazy. Um, yeah, so that inflates it a bit um, because other than that, he only had three games above 15, four games above 15 points. So, you know, you hope that spreads out a little bit more, but I, I still think even at the end of the fourth round, I think that's a bargain for Joe Mixon, to be honest. I'd be happy. I like if I was at the um, the three four turn. I had back to back picks. I'd be happy taking Mixon. I'd even be happy with him as like my number one running back. If it meant I went, you know, three receivers or, or Travis Kelsey and two receivers, and and then Joe Mixon was my my number one running back. Uh, I'd feel okay with that, um, just because I think he's a you know he's going to put up good numbers. So. Um, Beyond that, I mean, Chase Brown's an intriguing rookie. The guy's super, super talented, like, athletically. I think they drafted him in the fifth round. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm just checking. Yeah, they picked him in round five, so they, they invested a little bit of draft capital in him. Um, you know, he was at Illinois, and he carried the ball a lot. And, yeah, he's just a, he's an intriguing uh, prospect, but I don't – really he's a name to know if Mixon gets hurt other than that I don't think you should be drafting him you well agree with that, Dad? yeah I think um if you watched enough Bengal games uh, last year and I know uh you know they were on TV quite a bit and you know Samarji Piran was the backup and for Mixon and he looked he looked pretty good when he had the ball in his hand so um he was getting almost five yards a carry, I think. So that's what I think Chase Brown is going to come in. And I, I don't remember exactly the, the stats and stuff like that. I watched Chase Brown at Illinois. I watched a lot of Big Ten football. Uh, this guy's pretty damn good. So um, I think the Bengals got a big steal at pick um, at round five. I like his his uh, his size, five foot nine, two fifteen. That's to me, that's almost perfect running back size. So um, I, don't, I don't know how relevant he is in a passing game and, and things like that. Those are things, you know, to be determined. But, you know, as a pure, pure running back, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have a problem, especially on a dynasty draft. He should be, you know, he should be one of your early running backs. Yeah. He runs a low, he runs in the low four fours. So he has good speed for his size and, 
Um, yeah, again, like I like him in Dynasty, sure. Redraft, you know, unless you want to handcuff Mixon, basically. It, to me, it's just it's it's a waiver wire pickup for if Joe Mixon gets hurt. Yes, you know, and, and I, most I running backs do miss a few games. You know, if your running back plays 17 games, that's more unlikely than if they, you know, you know, if they play 10 games or something. Like it, it's very rare. We had a few of them last year, but um, it is very rare, especially especially a running back that's going to get probably 300 touches, uh, more chances to get hurt. So, yeah, uh, what I say about Samaj P. Ryan is if the Bengals really liked him as much as maybe everyone thought they did, why didn't they bring him back? He only signed a two-year contract for like less than $2 million. Like they didn't, they didn't bring him back and they knew, you know, they knew the Joe Mixon situation. They knew they would potentially like cut the guy and they still decided not to bring Samaj P. Ryan back. So it's like, yeah, I know people are like talking about him and like, oh, they liked him more than Mixon. It's like, well, they didn't show it by the contract they didn't give him unless he went somewhere else and they offered him money. I don't know, but, um, but we'll get into the receivers again, cut and dry here. Like you have Jamar Chase. Dad, are you going to argue with anyone that in a PPR league that wants to take Jamar Chase number one overall? Um, Absolutely over not. Jefferson? Yep, I agree. I would, um, I would have no issues uh, taking him number one. Yep, I agree. I'd probably still take Jefferson myself, but I'm not going to argue uh, against Chase. To me, it's Jefferson Chase McCaffrey Cup. You can make a case for one of those four being number one overall. Um, I would go Jefferson, but if you look at what Chase did last year, I think he would have outpaced Jefferson. You know, he missed some time. I think it was a hip injury. Um, but, you know, he had, uh, let's see, he missed five games, but he still had 87 catches. Um, so uh, 80, 87 catches in uh, 12 games is, um, let's see, 123, um, 123 catches on the year. He had over a thousand, almost a thousand fifty yards. Which, if you extrapolate that, that's a almost a fifteen hundred yard season. He had nine touchdowns in twelve games, which is a lot. Um, which would give him over almost thirteen touchdowns. So the guy was, you know, is a stud. Um, he could have Jefferson's third year was last year. And we saw what Justin Jefferson just did last year, um, putting up um, 1,800 yards, 128 catches. This is Jamar Chase's second year, um, or sorry, third year. And he could have a similar breakout like Justin Jefferson just had. So uh, I don't think there's really much to say. T. Higgins, another really good player. This team's going to support two receivers easily. Um, T. Higgins is currently um, going – as 26th overall, so just outside of round two. Are you good with that, Dad? Are you good with taking T. Higgins early yeah, in the third round? I'm really good with T. Higgins. I think he, um, I think if he was on a team and and he was uh, wide receiver one, I, I think he could do that very easily. I like the guy, um, like his size and his. You know how he plays wide receiver and stuff like that. I don't know. You know, I kind of feel bad slightly that he's going to be on the Bengals. They got to pay him. Bengals have historically known as a real cheap ass team. So, you know, you know, you got Burrow and Chase and T. Higgins. I hope the guy gets rewarded and not go somewhere else. He fits in good. He fits in really good with um, with Joe Burrow and and chase and stuff so i think i think the guy I, I like the guy the guy's a stud yeah let me ask you uh t higgins or chris Olave? uh higgins higgins or metcalf oh higgins and higgins or debo samuel uh higgins okay so yeah, you're right there. And that's the receiver. She's going around. I'd probably take a lobby. I think a lobby is going to break that's, out this year. And that's the only one that? I hesitated on and when I was thinking about it. So um. yeah, yeah. Um, I'm always have a weird like block in my head of like these receivers. Now we have Devonte Smith, T. Higgins, 
Jalen Waddle. They're the second best receiver on their team, yet they're going at very – you have to take them at the end of the second, beginning of the third if you want them on your team. And I'm always just a little hesitant because I'm looking at it I'm like, well, DK is the best receiver on his team. You know, Alave is the best receiver on his team. Keenan Allen is probably the best receiver on his team. Like, maybe I should just go those guys. But year after year, these guys produce – um, I mean, T. Higgins last year, wide receiver 17 overall, averaged 12 and a half, half PPR points, which is really good. Uh, that's a wide receiver too. Um, you know, he basically did, uh, he averaged 13 points in, in 2021. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm not going to argue with it. Um, and there's always the upside of just like, um, when Jamar Chase went down, uh, you know, if Jamar Chase does get hurt, now T. Higgins is the number one receiver for the Bengals. And I'm just trying to look right now. So uh, week eight through 12, the four weeks, that was the four weeks that um, Jamar Chase missed. T. T. Higgins had 12 and a half points, nine and a half points. Um, they had a bye week. If I'm seeing that right, uh, yep, a bye week, 19 over 19 points and then 20 points. That's what he had. So, um, two of those weeks are really, really good weeks 19 points and almost 21 points in half PPR. That's that's huge numbers. And then another one was 12 and a half points right around his average. And then nine and a half points, you're not disappointed, you're not excited. Um, that's what he did without Jamar Chase. So that's the potential if Chase gets hurt. So um, Tyler Boyd, solid receiver. Um, he kind of fits into like, I'm not really interested unless one of these other guys gets hurt. Uh, Dad, do you disagree with that? Do you take him at the very end of your draft and just say, you know, I have a decent upside receiver if one of those guys get hurt or how do you approach? Yeah, I would, you know, um, yeah, he is a really good wide receiver. I, I think it's his last year with the Bengals. Um, so there is a rookie behind him. Um, Tyler Boyd, even even when he was he was kind of a wide receiver too there for a while. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, I mean, there was a period of time. I think he played with AJ Green and um, and some of those guys, but. To me, he's yeah. Put him on the bench, you know. Draft yeah. him, and mm-hmm. yeah, when you got to play him, you know, because somebody else, because of bye weeks and things like that, I think you should do all right. Yeah, he's a nice player, and um, I, I think he was actually the number one receiver at least for one year. He had back to back thousand yard years. Then they drafted Higgins, and we saw the effects where he had eight hundred and fifty yards. And then they drafted Chase, and he still put over 800 yards, over 750 last year. But he's just not doing enough to, to really warrant any um, starts unless one of those guys get injured and he becomes the number two option. Then there's there's that upside. But other than that, not really interested. A couple, a couple names just to throw out there. Um, Trenton Irwin, I'm gonna, I, I pride myself – I'm probably saying I could probably name over 95% of the guys that caught four, uh, that scored four or five touchdowns last year, at least. Trenton Irwin caught four touchdowns, and I would never have guessed that. Um, He had 15 catches and four touchdowns. So um, that's kind of funny. And then, yeah, you you mentioned a couple rookies. They actually have two. Um, Charlie Jones is the guy that I do think is going to replace Tyler Boyd. Um, yeah, after this year, Charlie uh, Jones. Yeah, he was uh, played for Purdue, and he was kind of a volume receiver. Um, yeah, he should, you know, dynasty is what I, what I think. And um, yeah, anyway, especially yeah, go ahead. well, especially because um, we talked about it with T. Higgins. Are they going to pay him or not? They got to pay Burrow. They got to pay Chase. Can they afford to also pay Higgins, who deserves to be paid like a top receiver? So. Um, there's a and then if Tyler Boyd's not there, there's a weird outside shot that Charlie Jones is a big option next year. They probably draft someone if that's if they lose Higgins and Boyd, but um, just a name to th- to to keep an eye on. And then uh, 
I think it's Andre. Uh, I always forget the pronunciation, so I always have to look it up, but it's Yosivosh. Yos it's not pronounced how it looks. He played at Princeton, and the guy's just like an athletic freak. Like, he runs, uh, he's super tall. Um, he's a big receiver. He can run, like, in the four threes, but he's just super raw, like um, uh, just a complete raw receiver that needs a lot of uh, work. Um, so athletic freak, interesting prospect. He has time to uh, to learn, you know, being behind these these receivers. So um, I guess we'll get to the, the last one, the tight end. Uh, that's Irv Smith Jr., who was basically going to be boy. dead. Well, he was going to be dead in the water. And then he got to the Bengals, and then you were kind of like, ah. And then you were like, well, it's a very high, it's a very heavy um, uh, tight end draft. And Bengals were kind of one of those teams, like, they could take a Michael Mayer. They could take a Kincaid, because it's like, you know, they could use it. And then they did it, and then you're like, oh, interesting. So Irv Smith is now the number one tight end, you know, we assume, the number one tight end um, on the team. But... I don't really see outside of like basically what CJ Ozama did with the Bengals in 2021, 400, uh, 500 yards, 50 catches, five touchdowns. Um, what Hayden Hurst did last year as well, um, 50 catches, 400 yards, two touchdowns. That's kind of what I see with Irv Smith, 50 catches, 500 yards, maybe five touchdowns. Do you see yeah, it any I, different I, than? I agree. You know, they just need – I think Cincinnati just, you know, they don't need a high impact tight end. They just need somebody who's good enough. I know when I said he's your boy, I know you uh, you touted him when he was up in Minnesota. He unfortunately was always hurt. He never really got to show anybody what he could do. But when he's on the field, he looks he looks the part of a, a pretty good tight end. Yeah. So hopefully he can stay healthy and then – you know, catches 50 passes and stuff like that this year. And uh, and we'll see what happens. Yep. Yep. Still only 24 years old. He was a high second round draft pick, 50th overall. So, but again, if all these guys stay healthy, you can't see him doing anything outside of what we just said. So um, I think that wraps it up, Dad. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, winning the AFC North? Are they a Super Bowl contender? What do you think? Um, yes and yes. They should win the North. Um, they got the Ravens, I think, is their main competition. You know, uh, the Browns are, are a really good team. Steelers pretty much don't roll over for anybody. But, um, you know, it's typical AFC North. You know, they, they're going to be duking it out. But Bengals should be right there. Yep, yep, I agree. Um, I, I think it's them or the. I think this whole division's good. I mean, um, the next team we're going to talk about another AFC North team, the Cleveland Browns. They could. I mean, any of these four teams really, I can see winning the division. If I had to put my money on it. I'd put it on the Bengals and then the Ravens. Um, and you know, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Browns injuries. The yeah, injuries are always a factor. Yep. And they need that offensive line improved. If that hasn't improved, we think it has, but it has to play out, then I think yes. that's an issue. So, um, But we're going to wrap it up there. Again, we just mentioned it. We'll be back we're talking about the Cleveland Browns. Uh, as always, if you could like the video and subscribe, that would be fantastic. We'll catch you guys. Adios, everyone.